The variety of cassette tapes you can find is amazing. Everything from music to listen to while you're smoking your Parliament lights, to music to help you stop smoking. When I got my new TAC-W1200 cassette deck and started testing it, I noticed that the left side deck had less wow and flutter than the right side deck. Both were better than TAC's official specification for it, so I can't complain, but I wanted to find out what was the cause of the difference between the two decks. So I opened it up and I swapped the belts between the left and right side decks, and now the right side deck is the one with less wow and flutter. So clearly the belts play an important role in the performance of this deck. So that got me thinking about the possibility of an easy upgrade for this would be to install better quality and more consistently manufactured belts than what it comes with. So I took off the original belts and I measured them as accurately as I could and I ordered what I think are the correct sizes for it. These are EVG belts. You can find them from various suppliers online. I got them from Marvec Electronics which has their own website marvec.com or you can order from them on eBay. So here are the two sizes I ordered which hopefully are correct. SCX 5.1 and SCY 4.2. This one is a 5.1 inch by 0.048 inch square belt and this one is a 4.2 inch by 0.034 inch square belt. I got two sets of them to do both decks and they're only a couple dollars each so this whole set of belts here cost me less than $20, including shipping. So I'm first going to test the belts it came with, then I'll install these new belts, and I'll see if it makes any improvement in Wow and Flutter. This is the left side deck with the belts that were originally on the right side deck, which are the ones that are not as good. So you can see it's measuring around 0.16 to 0.17% WRMS. And here's the right side deck with the belts that used to be in the left side deck. And you can see it's doing much better at around 0.10% WRMS. So I would want both of the decks to be this good if I can. So that's why I'm going to try replacing the belts with those new ones and see if I can get both of them to be as good as this. Replacing the belts in this deck is super easy. There's only two belts. There's the main one going from the flywheel to the motor. And you notice the spindle on the motor has two grooves on it. The belt goes on the one that's closer to the rear of the deck. It's a lot easier to replace if you unscrew the mounting bracket for the motor. Although on this side, you probably can get away with doing it with just a hook tool to hook it onto the spindle. But on the other side, the clearance is not as good, so you probably will need to remove the motor. Then once you get this belt off, you can get access to the other belt, which goes from this groove on the inner side of the flywheel to this spindle up here. Now I think mostly this main belt is what's responsible for the wow and flutter because it directly drives the capstan, which is what actually moves the tape along. This one just drives the take-up reel, which is not quite as important, but just for the sake of completeness, I'll replace both of these belts. Here are the original belts I took off. These are the better ones in terms of wow and flutter, and here are the new belts I'll be installing to replace them. I compared them. The new ones are just a little bit smaller in diameter than the original ones, but of course they're going to get stretched out because these are brand new, never been used, so hopefully these are the correct sizes and they'll just stretch out a little bit once they get used. Now you don't have to worry about whether or not you get them perfectly straight on the pulleys because they're square belts so they'll tend to straighten themselves out as it spins. So before I go changing the ones on the other side I'm going to test these and see what difference it makes. Well here are the new belts installed and actually got worse. It's actually even a little bit worse than the worst of the two sets of original belts. But I'm going to try swapping the smaller of the two belts. So I swapped the smaller of the two belts back to the original one, while the main belt going from the motor to the flywheel is the new one. And that made a surprising improvement. It's almost as good as the original belts were. Now it could be that the new belts I ordered are simply a little bit too small because I wasn't exactly sure when I was measuring them how much you're supposed to stretch them out. So I'm going to try ordering the next size larger 
of these belts and see if that's a better match for the original belts. The belt is one whole show of perfection. Ridiculous. In the meantime, here are two tapes I already recorded on this deck. This first one is on TDK SA90 tape, and this is a really excellent tape. Sounds excellent. It was able to handle peaks up to 6 dB on the meter with no appreciable distortion. So this deck really does well with TDK SA Type 2 high bias tape. But surprisingly, also a very good performer is this Radio Shack HD tape, which I believe is a rebadged Maxell UD2 tape, also Type 2 high bias. This one also did very good on this deck. And yes, as you can tell, I'm a big fan of using my brother P-Touch to do these labels. I got quite carried away on this one. So here's the rundown of all of these main capstan drive belts. I tested all of them on the right side deck and in conjunction with the original TIAC smaller belt. So that's not a factor in this. The original TIAC belt that was originally on the left side deck turned out to be the best one in terms of wow and flutter. These wow and flutter measurements are all in WRMS. And the original stock TIAC belt that was in the left side deck turned out to be the best at around 0 0.08 to 0.10%. The next was this PRB belt distributed by EVG in their SCX 5.1 size. It measured around 0.12 to 0.14%. And then was the right side original TIAC belt it measured around 0.14 to 0.16 percent and the worst was the other new PRB belt it measured around 0.15 to 0.17 percent so you can see there's quite a variation here even between the two original TIAC belts and one of the new PRB belts was pretty much right in the middle between them so I think all of these are probably from the same manufacturer and they just don't have very good quality control that's why there's such a large variation and why some people they get a deck with one of these good belts in it and they think it's perfectly fine and some people are unlucky they get one of these decks and it has one of these inferior belts in it and they have noticeable wow and flutter so this definitely demonstrates that there's quite a bit of room for improvement and the belts that are used in these decks. If they could somehow improve their quality control and all get them as good as this one, it could make a measurable and audible improvement in the performance of these decks. But as things stand right now, if you're unlucky and your deck comes with a not so good belt in it, replacing it with an aftermarket one may or may not improve the performance. It could make it better or could actually make it worse. So, I guess you have to do what I did and buy two of them, and hopefully one of them is going to be better than the other. I'm going to do some more digging and see if I can find another supplier for these belts, which hopefully will claim to have better quality than these ubiquitous PRB belts that have pretty much cornered the market. If I can find something better than these, and they're not too terribly expensive, I'll give it a try and see how it turns out. Now as for the smaller of the two belts used in these decks, what I originally thought was the correct size 
clearly was not correct because when I put this belt on it felt very tight going on and when I tried it out it made the performance much worse than the original belt that the deck came with. So clearly these belts are too tight, not the correct size. The next step up is SCY 4.4. However, that's a very uncommon size and some vendors even claim that it has been discontinued. So I stepped up to the next size above that, SCY 4.6, which is a very common size and is readily available. So I think this is actually the correct size for the smaller belt. And again, I bought two of them just to compare. I'm going to test these two new belts and the two original belts the deck came with and see how they compare in terms of wow and flutter. And all of them are going to be tested with the best of the original larger size belts. So this will be an equal comparison. <laughs> Michelle? Michelle? <laughs> what? Get your headphones on. Oh, I'm doing my work. I'm emceeing. Are you listening, you know, to, you listening to this? Hey. This is, this is wonderful. Didn't she remix this for the Beatles? I suspect what happened was that they recorded this on quarter track tape, which had something recorded in the other direction. And when they played it back, they probably sent it to the mastering lab when this record was made and they accidentally played it on a half-track tape recorder, thus picking up the track going in the opposite direction, and they figured that this is the correct mix. And this is what they put on the record. This mistake wasn't made on the CD, this was made on the original release. Now if you play it the other way around, Erwin, it will say, Paul Super Apple is dead. <laughs> I buried Paul Super Apple. So here's the verdict with the smaller belts. There was still some variance in Wow and Flutter between them, but not nearly as much as with the main capstan drive belt. So I don't think you would notice any big difference between these unless you have a really good ear because the range was only around 0 0.08 at the best to around 0.11 at the worst. And with these results being so similar, I can conclusively say that this is the correct size, SCY 4.6 if you need to replace one of these smaller belts. So if you have one of these decks, experimenting with different belts may be an inexpensive and relatively easy way to improve its performance. There are other upgrades I have in mind for this deck, such as replacing the motors. I ordered these new old stock Matshusta motors from eBay. They took about two months to come in from Bulgaria, but they finally arrived. And I also ordered this Pacific stereo motor, which claims to be the highest quality cassette deck motor available today. But I'll save experimenting with these motors for another video, because it's quite a bit more advanced and it requires soldering. So I wouldn't recommend messing around the motors for a beginner. And to be honest, I don't even think this is necessary because just by experimenting with different belts I was able to improve the performance of this deck to a level that I'm entirely happy with. It's not the best cassette deck I own but it should be more than good enough for most people especially as the prices of high quality vintage cassette decks continue to increase. And I'll leave you with a little bit of WFMU's incorrect music program which I recorded back in March 1998 on this standard Type 1 tape with no Dolby noise reduction and I'll be playing it with the TAC Dex dynamic noise reduction turned on. Chris, thanks a lot for giving us a call. A favorite of yours, Michelle. I love it. Lonesome Joe, it's Jones. Lonesome, lonesome Joe, it's Jones. Jeannie Montgomery. Queenie. Queenie. Queenie Montgomery. Let this thing run, baby. Just let it go. Lonesome, lonesome George Jones. So I began in 82 praying for you. As you were lonely, sad, and so blue. That the Lord chose me to pray and help you. Lonesome, lonesome George Jones. Oh, no, 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 no.
Queenie Montgomery, singing from her heart, she means it. Wouldn't you want this in your collection at home? 